innovation is doing new things. With these ideas, our today's thought leader is presenting new concept in learning by blending management principles and his own experience. This unique idea of blending management principles and project management conceived by Mr. Sanjay Sahai is based on nearly handling 15 projects. The last straw, though generally we use it for negative things, but last straw on the camel's back was the launch of a book. The launch of a book called MBA at 16. I think we have a copy of the book here by Sri Sumato Bhatshi who happens to be India's number one business writer. We are planning a seminar on Homeland Security. Homeland Security primarily the department in the government of USA which is which has been created as a response to war on terror. In the process of organizing that symposium, I got to interact with Subhuto Bauchi on three to four occasions of which one was a telephonic conference call with him. To my utmost surprise and dismay, one day before the launch of this book by Penguin, I was told by my son that there is a chapter dedicated to me in this book. So it is a great surprise, but certainly a great uh, honor as well. The chapter is named as Facebook Face Off. So this Face Off, it starts from there. So Facebook Face Off and the whole chapter is dedicated to the management concept of innovation. So I, I, I treat it as a, a tribute to Sumudo Bhavchi that I have started or I am starting, I am on the verge of a new lecture series which is known as Experiential Learning Lectures. Experiential learning for senior executives and people who are at the decision making level is the highest level of learning. It crosses from your normal textbook to case studies to experiential learning. Experiential learning broadly is of two types. Either you experience or I experience and narrate it to you and provide you sufficient amount of skills, sufficient amount of learning to customize it to your regular needs. So that is in short experiential learning. Over the course of this lecture, I will be able to tell you as to what it exactly means and how it helps all of us if we get into this mode of learning to do our task, to do our project, project in a much better manner. So over the course of this lecture, we will have how this whole thing started. I have given you a small overview as to how the whole thing has started. We will get into why it is experiential learning lectures, what is the experiential learning module, innovation, definition, roles, ideas, principles of innovation, process of innovation, knowledge learning, design, <coughs> innovation life cycle, the diffuse, how you diffuse the innovative idea. And then we come to in the second session, which uh, Jyoti has promised that it would be more interesting than the first one. I'll try my level best to make the first one also as interesting as possible. Is the study on police ID, how innovative police ID is. And also, the second case study belongs to the place where you are located. That is Kundwar Kare, uh, with DC, CEO and all of us. We are in the process of what we call as Operation Restoration Kundwar Kare which Guti uh, uses some better words, more fanciful than what I, I use. So second is Kundwar Kere and of late, only on the 14th, 15th of this month, we have been able to detect a major scandal in Kuwampu University. So post the scandal, I have a proposed model, which so to say might not be very innovative, but certainly a proper, appropriate, complete and wholesome use of ICT technology in the Indian examination system is still a long way off. So if it is implemented, it will certainly cut down this sort of a misuse to a considerable degree. Experiential learning is involved in an activity, looks back, evaluates, determines, uses. That's all. You are involved in an activity, you evaluate, you determine, and it is used at a later stage for a prospective project, either a replication, or addition of ideas or a customization or a near similar situation. Next. So this is the experiential learning model. This is certainly not mine. 
it is picked up from one of the knowledge resources we have been talking about. And I, I believe that this is a very, very uh, true reflection of the actual reality which a practitioner, which a project manager experiences while doing a project. This is a combination or a very uh, simple theoretical understanding tool of both project management and a very professional approach to a project. Start with the experience, that is the do part of it. The reflection part of it is share and process and apply part of it is generalize and apply. In the subsequent slides we will see what it is like. First part is the activity you perform it. What happens, I will take an example of government for the simple reason I have been, been working in the government for the last 22 years as a very small crowd where I can share a couple of things. Doing things yourself is not supposed to be a very great virtue in the world. So we are trained and we feel happy to live on crutches. Correct. So for every single activity, whether it is general in nature or it is specialized in nature, we look for experts, we look for consultants, we look for all sorts of people. Until you soil your own hand by the mud, you can never become a farmer. So that's what the reality is. There is no farmer who has been trained in some agricultural management school and has created some sort of a revolutionary thing and changed the agricultural landscape of this country. So basically planning for discovery is the key concept and sit on your hands. And broadly for anything related to project management, anything related to experiential learning, anything related to innovation, the big picture has to be yours. Until this you have the big picture, until this you can see this vast expanse of 256 acres in front of you, you will not know the magnitude of Kundwala Kere. But many people inclusive and my friend here, Arvind Sinha, who has been visiting me on a quite a, quite a regular basis, he also says, okay, I have seen this, all these lakes and all that in UP, this place, that place. But I think the expanse which he sees now will be certainly different and certainly more engrossing than what you would have seen any time earlier in his life. For me, this is the best walking track I have been using for the last eight months. And from there, my love for this lake starts, and we are also involved in the second case that will we'll come later. Next. So here we come to the reflect part of it, that is the share and the process. The sharing part is what happened, and the processing part is what is important. So these are the two concepts beyond which we move on to the next stage, where it is learning, the reflection part of it, how we apply it. So similar projects, dissimilar projects, depending on the thought process you have, depending on the capability you have. There are people who use projects in the social enterprise sector, they use it for great commercial projects. Outbound learning and experiential learning are different in a manner that if you attend outbound learning course, they will put you through a physical exercise or a physical activity, bring, back, bring you back to a place like this and they will try and correlate management principles whether it's team bonding, team spirit, leadership, motivation and so on and so forth. Innovation is the creation of better and effective products, processes, service, technologies, ideas that are accepted by markets, governments and society. So nowhere in any management or management terminology it says that it is restricted to corporates and restricted to multinationals. This is a very, very wrong thought process which is somehow it has, it has come out and it, is, it has become very, very acceptable that a business school caters to only the corporates. A business school might as well cater to social enterprise, it might as well cater to prisons, it might as well cater to demands and it certainly has to cater for the governments and whatever level and public sector takings because best of the management schools in this country are run by the government. There is the public face of Indian public education is not the rural school. The public face of Indian public education are the IITs and IIMs and Indian should have seen. Now we are talking so much about innovation. This for home. This for you and me. This for the end user. If you are not able to get into the mental frame of the end user, you will always be a bit of a company. 
until and unless you understand the end user. And end user for the only two things. One, that he gets things in the price level which he wants. And it should improve his quality of life. If it does not improve his quality of life, however much you try, that fellow is not going to work. So creativity and innovation have a mother-child relationship. If you are not creative, you will not be able to innovate. You will not be able to get that idea itself. If you don't get the idea itself, all the five different phases of innovation which we have been talking about, all experiential learning which we are talking about, cannot be ignited, right sir? So it cannot be ignited. If it is not ignited, then you set the set your house on fire. Then not. Just if it doesn't get ignited, so Buddha will not be able to set his house on fire. Anyway, we will do it for you. Correct. So creativity, innovation, concept. So you come to concept and from concept you take it to reality. So if you can make it happen, I'll show you this lake. You say such a beautiful lake. I I hope it becomes Hudson Lake one day. Some fellow will say it will become Hussain Sagar one day. So you like a big poet and a writer. So you will keep talking that cross the road, go home, have solid food and sleep next morning. No care, no lake, nothing. How do you translate a thought process, a vision, a dream to reality is the biggest challenge to every single prophet in this country. Design is the ability to move from the existing to the present. So I have a thought process, I have to deliver it. Politicians are not able to, bureaucrats are not able to. You put Sri Dhara, you will deliver not one metro, you will deliver ten metros. You put Kurkurian. He will not give you 10 liters of milk, he will give 10 million liters of milk. He will say, why are you asking for 10 liters? So you say, oh, Cadbury is coming. So oh, let it come, it will graze and go. Amul will run the way it has to run. So this is the strength of design. And design does not mean the shape of the car. Design does not mean the aerodynamic make of the aircraft. Design means the inner strength. The architect's strength of a building. Next. Prototypes, it has to go through stages, it has to go through milestones, it has to go through validations, it can it has to go through mid-career correction, mid-project correction. The biggest talent of a project manager is the capability to do mid-project correction. After the project, leaving its right track, leaving its roadmap, any number of times at the end, it gets to its goal in the same manner, same configuration, same impact for which the project had started and quite a few times because of this capability and because of direction and because of the experiential learning which they get through the project, they are able to deliver a product or service which was better than what it was designed for in the initial stage. Now you have a innovation. Now how do you diffuse it? How do you diffuse it? What do you do? If I have it to myself, I know police the idea how a software is created. It does not help anybody. It helps one department that is nearly all. But the resource base and the thought process which I have can entertain another 35 departments in Karnataka and lot many ministries and departments in most of the state governments in the country. Okay. So, there are certain channels over time among the members of a social system. I generally say that all these technological funders or management principles, say professionalism, say leadership, say motivation. Now, from a professional ethic, it has to become a social ethic. From a social ethic, it becomes a national character. Correct. Why we lack work culture? We lack work culture because we neither have the professional ethic and it has not come in for social favor. So the five stages of diffusion of uh, innovation that is knowledge, persuasion, decision, implementation and transformation. This explains where we are at the center of the whole uh, diagram is the decision. We start with the knowledge where you probably know that there is a project, there is innovation, there is something which you, are, uh, which you get the information on. Move. So exposed to an innovation, but we like innovation. If we have a broad idea, then there is a lake which has been renovated in Hyderabad. That Hudson Lake was renovated. There are so many lakes which uh, Shuba's sister is aware of. We are not aware of which has been renovated. Correct. So we know that, okay, some uh, innovation or renovation, if we 
use it synonymously for the present purposes as means some people might object to it so I said only for the present purposes so we know that it has happened but we don't have the information the first first day is to create a knowledge base on which we can bank on to run our project next individual is interested in innovation and actively seeks information detail about the innovation we are at this stage as well as both of our capacities and the whole knowledge base which is supposedly available with us is at a very very crude, at a very very initial and in the stage of infancy. Nonetheless, it is sufficient enough that we have a child, we can make it flow. That depends on our capability, our confidence, our love, our passion, how we grow up the child, we make him into a bill gate or we make him into a manual labor. Next. So take the concept of change, whether to adopt or reject. This is the crux. We will reach a stage where challenges will be thrown on us. You will get sleepless nights. You will be hounded. You will say, why I took this project? Morning, if you get up again, and the first thing which hits you is, I should do this project. These things are related. So if that, you get into that vicious cycle, wherein you can't leave the project, somehow you are attached, involved, associated, you have put that amount of energy, that amount of effort, that amount of passion, then withdrawing out of it doesn't make any sense. Having carried your coat shape for 10 years, the only logical thing is going to be direct. Next. Next. So, employees innovation to a very integral and individual determines the usefulness of the innovation. How useful is the innovation? And here individual means not one person. It might be an organization, it might be a society, it might be a state, it might be a state. So that is the individual, as Arvinsala has accepted, that it is an individual, it is a corporate entity. This is also said a corporate entity. So a little bit of corporate car will be used with the business rules. Next. The individual finalizes the decision to continue using the innovation. See what happens, you commission a project, you reach the critical level, it starts functioning. What is most important is how you sustain it. To sustain a project, what you need, you need a core team. I have been telling again and again, if this restoration has to come on a very strong footing, then it needs a core team of engineers, of technicians, of uh, people who can attract tourists, of photographers or whatever, but 10 to 15 people <coughs> who can run this whole big enterprise. It has to be there, without them, it is not going to happen. So finally, the project has to become a robust functioning project, which will be irreversible in nature. This is the second session. We have three case studies. Different types, and is already successful, that is full ID, ERP software. <coughs> Enterprise Resource Planning Software for the Police Department, the United States Police. Second is evolving. The location where you are presently co-located with me is the theater of the second project which is evolving. And the third is a proposed one in future, that's the University Examination System. So ERP is a software solution which takes care of every single activity task of that organization. So that is an ERP and that is how ERP is placed at the highest level of software creation. Next. So this is the reason why this metamorphosis is required. But it is a true metamorphosis in the sense that you are working at a physical level or you are working with large number of software and you don't have the wherewithal and the skills to create an ERP which means it is one integrated system which has linkages, intra-linkages inside one module, inter-linkages within different modules, single module is as one integrated system, all modules together are also one integrated system, having the capability to deliver, having the capability to upgrade, having the capability of scalability and providing your one solid, complete, worthwhile, wholesome, digital solution for your organization. So this is the model. This is a model software and we feel that this is the model on which the government of India and lot many other states would create the ERPs. If they want to reinvent the wheel for things better known to them, they can do that. But we are sufficiently, sufficiently competent to replicate the software 
within 14 days in any Indian language. For Karnataka, it is very good. Next. These are the twelve modules. Plan, law, order, and traffic. These are our main uh, functional modules, which is related to policing. We have uh, finance, administration, stores, which is the finance and administration related issues. The stores module also has the improv part, <coughs> but because the improv of government of Karnataka was supposed to be much better, much robust, and much better done. So we also moved on to the improv of government of Karnataka and in the next stage when we get into the integration of legacy software with our ERP, we intend to integrate the improv with our uh, software. Then we have our uh, reserve transport which are our ancillary modules, training is there, wireless is there, forensic science laboratory and over these 11 modules is overlay what we call the management information. That is the basic tool, that is the basic utility, that is the basic functionality which every manager needs. As a ZP president, you will know all your 12 departments, how they are working, what they did yesterday, what is the money spent. So there is a total dashboard which is in front of you, which provides you the critical input day in and day out 24-7 and also provides you tools and utilities which respond to your click of the mouse and connects you to people, provides instructions to whosoever you intend to. So this is the innovation. So this gentleman, he creates something, sits in the state crime records bureau, puts some switches, plugs here and there, and he says, integration testing is done, load uh, testing is done, regression testing is done, nothing is done. Correct. You have to take it to the user acceptance test. It has to be a real time test by the users in the environment in which the software is supposed to run. Certainly you cannot run it across the state, so it has to be done with 10 computers, 20 computers, but it will go through all functionality, all features and there are systems which will be able to put the exact amount of load which a 3000 uh, networking system will create or the amount of transfer of data which the system will create when it is at its complete final optimum function. Secondly, it's bilingual, it was in English till the time I joined. So with my commitment to Canada, so I, I got it translated to Canada also and all the documents are signed by me and they say take it bilingual today. So the great service I have done for Canada language. And uh, the Canada State Police runs on a bilingual software, the uh, both the languages can be used. It has created some other issues which is technical in nature. The database so created does not respond to the text part of it. Anyway, we will try to sort it out. We will put some search into something. It is an application training. Nobody will give me 20 crore rupees to train. We will just come to that when we move further. And a centralized architecture. It was based on a decentralized architecture. Wherein in every district, there are supposed to be servers. The information, all the data used to push to the district server from district to the central server. No, no, nowhere in the world distributed architecture, decentralized architecture runs. I had read somewhere when I was working in United Nations, so I didn't know what I was doing, but I said centralized architecture, more level to gain all of it. So it went around that IG knows. So we have to do centralized, I did not know anything. So finally centralized architecture happened and we have just two servers for the whole chain. For the HP servers, I will not be able to give you any further technical specification. There are two HP servers, it runs on VMware virtualization technology and two servers in a virtualized atmosphere are recreated into 56 servers. I propose an integrated university examination management system. This sort of management systems are running across the globe. There is no innovation involved in this. Nonetheless, if we can put it to a new organization, new campus and in a place which is not that digitally enabled, I still presume that it is uh, even an organization like Prometric which is running campuses across the globe, it failed and it thoroughly failed when they, <coughs> yes sir, when sir, uh, when they conducted their first CAT exam in India. So, uh, instead of cycles, they became CATs, but they came back as cycles and from next year CAT is this. So finally the cat belongs to the tiger, I think that is the moral of the story. So the cat always looks for a tiger. Anyway, so the first point is the comprising of following modules, creation, collection, storage, transfer and printing of question paper at the examination hall. 9 o'clock the exam starts, 8.50. It comes to your terminal. 8.50, you give a print command or it is already programmed. 
37 candidates, 38 question papers, those who are going to come in front of them with unique number, unique identification number, you went to all these guys, they are in the story. Correct. So thank you for the watching that we find me happy. Nonetheless, there is a small thing which is working at my back. I told you earlier also that I am just a public face of the team. This is the Obinor Kare region. I was officer of I think 2009 batch, Shanapa. 2009 batch, he has been in hospital, the mechanical engineer from IIT Madras. So he helped me out with part of the presentation. I am extremely thankful to him. I have a freelancer, web designer. My name is Pushpa, she has been working with me for the last 34 days. She works on my personal website project. And this was done as a matter of courtesy and goodwill. So she is Mrs. Pushpa, my website designer. We have uh, Shubha, the electrical engineer in case she has been the uh, informal manager of all these things, lot of our own sweet well and uh, uh, what do you say, uh, interest to make something happen in the city. She is also extremely active with the Kundwar Kerala project. Extremely thankful to all of you for having me here. Thanks a lot. We will thank you of any of you at any time. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot.